this section we'll be covering um, how to write code in Verilog for straight machines. Uh, we won't be covering how straight machines are divide, uh, designed in detail, but we'll do uh, a few examples in case you have forgotten how to do that. So uh, here is a example. Uh, let's say we have th three processing elements, A, B, and C and uh, b operates on output of a c operates on output of b uh, then let's say for example a outputs in a shared ram and uh, that that output is used by b and then b performs something on the same data and that output is used for c used by c so uh, normally uh, finite state machines are used uh, to control circuits so, in, so we need a controller that that can trigger b and c uh, once a is done we can trigger b and then when b is done we can trigger c so we need a controller and we'll be designing it using uh, fsm so let's say uh, controller is started by an external start signal and when whenever there is a start signal we start a we send start signal to a a does its processing and writes its results uh, wherever it wants and then when it's done uh, it sends a done signal let's assume all these singles are single cycle pulses uh, when a is done we would want to start b and uh, b will do its processing and when when b is done it will send a done signal and similarly when b is done we want to start c and when c uh, does its processing uh, it will give it give us a done signal and that you know, on that point will we'll, uh, generate another done signal which shows that all the processing is completed so in this uh, simple toy example we need a controller that can uh, start these processes and and wait for dance so uh, normally what i prefer to do is that when i had to design, i have to design a state machine i normally write inputs and outputs uh, and then i generally write sequence of steps looking at those outputs uh, if i make if i make a sequence of steps that can be translated into state diagram uh, normally easily so for example in this case we have a global start signal then uh, we have uh, on, on, on that signal will start A, which, which will be our output. Then we'll wait for done from A, which will be our input. So basically, all the dones and the global start is an input. And uh, this, all the starts to processors uh, are our output, and final done is our output. So if I write the sequence of steps, it's basically this that. I'll wait for start um, and do nothing until there is a global start signal. And if there we have that signal, we'll start A. And after that, we'll wait for done from A. And uh, based on that, we'll start B. And then we'll wait for done from B. And then we'll start C. And then we'll wait for done from C. And then we'll start done. And after that, we can go to state one again uh, to wait for start again, so so that we can do the same process again. So now, if I have to translate into a state machine, first we we generally make a state diagram uh, with the circles re representing states and arrows representing state transitions. So there are two kinds of state machines. One is smooth state machine in which outputs are dependent on state only. So in this case, we have uh, four outputs, start A, start B, start C, and done. So initially, let's say we are in idle state. So we'll wait for uh, start. And whenever there is start, we can start A. So since output is dependent on state only, so we'll have to have a state for for this. So we'll have to have a state start A so that we can assert the output start A. And when we start A, we wait for uh, we can we can after that we can start waiting for the done so we'll have another state wait a in which we are waiting for done from from processor a uh, so we go unconditionally from start a to wait a because we just need this state for one cycle signal start a then from wait a we go to 
uh, we wait for done A, and as soon as done A comes, we transition from wait A to start B to assert the start signal of process B. And then we go back to another state, uh, wait B, where we'll be waiting for done B. As soon as done B comes, we can start C, and when uh, after that, we can wait for uh, done of C. When, once we have done of C, we can go to state of done so that we can assert the, uh, the final done signal and after that we can go back to idle state. So uh, because we have to have one uh, a state for each output, so in most state machine generally there are more states. And in most state machine on arrows uh, on these edges, we only mention the input because output is not depending uh, dependent on inputs. Output dep uh, is only a function of states only. So these four states are output states. Rest of the states don't assert any output. So so these are all required because we need these four outputs. Uh, on the contrary, there is another uh, kind of state machine called Beely's machine in which outputs are dependent on state as well as inputs. So in that case, what, uh, uh, what we do is we mention output on the state transitions. For example, I'm in idle and I'm waiting for start from A. So as soon as I uh, get a start from A, I assert start A signal as well. So on the left side of bar is input and on the right side of bar is output. So we don't need a separate state for starting A. We'll just assert output while we are going from this state to this state. Now we can wait uh, for done in this state instead of having a start A state uh, separate. So from wait A, we can go to, uh, we are waiting for done from A. So as soon as we have done from A, we can start process B. So again, we assert the output in, on the same cycle and uh, we don't have to have a separate state. And similarly, when we get a done from B, we start C. Similarly, when we get a done from C, we can do, uh, we send it, we can send the done signal and go back to uh, straight idle. So this way, uh, you can see that there are lesser number of states in MIDI state machine. So, so this is kind of benefit of MIDI state machine. But uh, since in MIDI state machine, uh, the main difference is that uh, the in move state machine uh, we said that the output is only a function of uh, state but in melee state machine output also depends on input as well so that means that there is a direct combinational path here that this one that uh, uh, that goes from input to output normally it is recommended that uh, we have registered output of our modules so that's kind of the undesirable part of melee state machine personally i normally prefer melee state machine and if it is required i just add a register uh, a separate register at the output otherwise uh, mostly it doesn't make any uh, any difference okay so uh, I'll, I'll just this cloud is showing combinational logic so and this register means a register so i uh, i just rearrange it uh, so that uh, the register uh, state is mm, a function of uh, input and current state and output is also a function of current state and input. So that's what we uh, we want to uh, write code for. So for writing Verilog code, we have to write this register and then we have to write this combinational block. For writing a register, we already know that we use always at positive clock. But normally when we write code for uh, a state machine, it's better to use parameters. Parameters are, uh, uh, it makes, it's not necessary, but it makes the code more readable. And so we, uh, while reading the code, we, we know which state we are instead of figuring out from the number uh, which state we are. So it's just like hash define in C. So these, these are the uh, kind of constants defined in our uh, module. So we have defined idle to be 0, weight A to be 1, weight B to be 2, weight C to be 3. And uh, for making a register, we, we have four shares, so two bits are enough. So we can write always that positive clock, and if, if on reset, we can 
uh, set it to idle uh, otherwise i can uh, stay uh, i can have this input i can name it state underscore next uh, we'll have to write some code to uh, to have this logic as well but at the moment we can just label it state underscore next uh, you can ignore these hash ones uh, for, for the moment these are not required actually so for writing this combinational cloud uh, what we do is we normally uh, uh, write a key statement and uh, we say that if current state is something then based on something we make the decisions for example if current state is idle and we get an input uh, start then we want to assert start a is equal to one so that's what we are doing that if case uh, if state is idle and if start is one we want to assert start a and we also want to make next state to be bit a so start a state underscore next which was the input to state register will be waiting so if i write this code what does it mean it basically means that start a we are writing code for start a and it's uh, uh, it depends on uh, on case and we already know that case basically generates a mux so based on state there is a mux and if the state is idle and start signal is one then we are asserting one but we haven't specified uh, what will happen if start is zero if i don't write an else that means that i haven't specified it so if we don't specify it that effectively means that we want to retain the previous value so it will assert a, uh, it will uh, attach the current output uh, back to the input uh, this is called a combinational feedback and it's also called a latch that we never want in our circuit so uh, so basically this this discrepancy is there because we haven't uh, uh, haven't defined here what should start a b if start signal is not there so in other words there should have been uh, we should have specified that it would remain zero if if there is no start signal you know or in other words we should have added this arrow in the state diagram that if there is no start then start a should be zero and this is also true for other outputs as well for example uh, uh, that i should do it for start b as well start c as well and done as well so that if there is no done from c then i should not assert uh, final done so if there is done from c then i should assert Final done, so I should add these small circles for that as well. And this is not the end of the story. We haven't specified what will be the value of weight A, weight B, uh, start A. In uh, what will be the value of start A in the rest of the states as well. So if I write the code in the same way and I don't specify start A in the rest of the states, then it again there will be a combinational feedback. So one way is that I assert every output in every case statement and for every if i have uh, i put uh, put an else statement and that will effectively mean uh, that i put zero in this case for um, uh, uh, zero in rest of the cases uh, for start a similarly i should put uh, zero uh, for start b start c and done here uh, and that will effectively mean that i have to add these signals here and for every case so that also uh, that makes the code a bit cluttered and also design diagram a bit cluttered as well uh, a shortcut to uh, do the same thing is that we define default values of all outputs if we define default values of all outputs we can make uh, our design diagram uh, the, the state diagram simpler as well as uh, our code a bit simpler uh, so basically we can put start a start b start c done and state next uh, uh, we can give default values to these signals so by default state next will remain whatever the current state is and all the rest of outputs will remain zero so if i do that then i don't i don't need to put else to every if and uh, uh, by default it will automatically ensure that if i haven't connected it it defaults to zero so uh, that uh, that's uh, in that way i don't need to add these signals in the state diagram as well so that will be also less cluttered so now now the coding part is easy after this uh, default values i just need to do uh, that I, for every state i just 
look at it what at what input i want what output for example if done a is one i want start b to be one so if done a is one i want start b to be one and i want next state to be with b so this way i can write code for all of the state machine um, so that's it if you follow these guidelines then uh, you won't have any latches in your code and, uh, and it should turn fine and there are other uh, ways as well some people prefer uh, a separate logic for straight underscore next and separate logic for outputs but i generally prefer it this way uh, another thing is uh, that is called one hot encoding so uh, what what it means is that uh, the parameters that we set earlier were uh, two bit parameters and we had straight uh, two bit state uh, if we uh, encode it in such way that uh, we have a different bit for every state for example if there are four states then we have four bit state variables so if bit 1 is 1 that means that we are in idle state if bit 2 is 1 then we it means that we are in weight state weight a state and so on so every state can be identified by just one in the uh, in the state uh, register this is called one hot encoding this has uh, some benefits for example um, so if we have a state register and what we want is we want to assert uh, start a start a if we are in idle state and we have a uh, we have a start signal so this can be uh, basically implemented using and and gate only uh, while uh, earlier we saw that for implementing the start a signal using uh, if we had two bits for state then it would have been a max uh, that that will uh, that would have been implementing this so uh, so definitely the combinational part is smaller here so if we are uh, having some timing issues in, in our design we can we can try one hot encoding and normally we don't really need to write uh, for one hot encoding always uh, since these tools allow us uh, that we we can have us uh, we have a setting inside Vivado or uh, uh, Xilinx ISC where we can uh, check that uh, state machine should be implemented as one node and it will automatically uh, do the uh, conversions uh, without our knowledge even if we haven't used one node encoding but we should know that this this uh, this this slide shows that what benefit we have it's not for free though uh, so the logic that we have uh, 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 we have lesser logic here but we have more flip flops that are used by one hot encoding uh, so one hot is generally fast but can use more flip flop so it's a trade off uh, if we if you are short on uh, slice registers then you can uh, use uh, you, you should not use one hot encoding but if you are uh, you are short on timing then you should use uh, what if it had been a more machine so if it had been a Moore machine, then we would have uh, a separate state for each uh, out uh, for output. So for example, we had a done a, a start A state, start B state, start C state, and done state. So in that case, even this register would have been gone uh, because that bit was enough to assert the uh, start A signal because that was a separate state. But again. It was an uh, it had uh, additional states, so that means we can add more flip flops, uh, but uh, will reduce this output forming logic uh, more. So uh, so basically we have uh, one hot more uh, machine is faster at the cost of more flip flops. So that's that's generally the trade off that we take when we uh, design. Uh, hardware that uh, we can trade off between speed and area and at times between flip-flops and combinatorial logic so that that's basically the essence of uh, what I uh, understand about strategy thanks